Beljansky developed and studied the activity of small RNA fragments. These RNA fragments, administered sublingually, stimulate the production of white blood cells and platelets. Beljansky made the connection between then recent discoveries showing that small RNAs are essential as primers in the first step of DNA synthesis and the potential of his own short-chain RNAs. His experiments provided direct evidence that his RNAs act as primers for the initiation of DNA replication and are thus likely to behave as triggers for cell division and differentiation of stem cells in the bone marrow where white blood cells are produced. Beljansky was interested in seeing whether this activity might be useful in stimulating the proliferation of white blood cells and platelets in order to strengthen the immune system. You can see in this slide the lagging chain is missing a 3' hydroxyl group which is needed to continue DNA synthesis. The Beljansky primers fill this gap to effectively allow the DNA strand to complete the synthesis process. So what was he thinking about? This slide shows the platelet counts for a cancer patient in chemotherapy. The chemo drugs cause a quick loss of platelets, but before long, the count comes back up into the normal range. This oscillation may occur a few more times, but after several treatments with the chemo drug, the body can no longer restore its own platelets. The numbers drop and remain dangerously low. The oncologist now has a choice to interrupt chemotherapy and wait until the platelets come up on their own, or if necessary, give the patient a platelet transfusion, which also requires a suspension of treatment. Either way, the tumor has a respite from the drugs, and rather than shrink, it begins to grow again. To test whether the RNA fragments could restore healthy platelet levels following administration of a chemotherapy drug, Beljansky used a rabbit model. The rabbits were given cyclophosphamide, and their platelets were counted. After 10 days, the platelets had dropped to zero, and all of the rabbits were dead. Rabbits given cyclophosphamide, followed by the RNA fragments, were protected. Their platelets bounced back to normal and continued to recover after each of seven drug administrations. All of the rabbits protected with RNA fragments were still alive at the end of the experiment. Taking all of Beljansky's data on the RNA fragments, together with safety data from other laboratories and documentation of the more recent inclusion of RNA fragments in infant formulas, a major cancer hospital, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, agreed to conduct a phase one clinical trial with the RNAs in the patient population where they are needed the most, cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. The chemo drugs are used to shrink the patient's tumors but it is well known that the drugs also damage some of the patient's healthy tissues, particularly those in which cells are rapidly dividing, as in the lining of the intestines and the stem cells of the bone marrow. The destruction of bone marrow cells causes a critical loss of white blood cells and platelets. The white blood cells are essential for immunity, enabling the patient to fight off bacteria and viruses, while the platelets are essential for blood clotting. Without platelets, a simple cut or bruise can be fatal. The medical term for diminished platelet counts is thrombocytopenia. In the clinical trial, advanced patients with a variety of solid tumors were treated with a variety of anti-tumor drugs and drug cocktails. Here are the platelet counts in a chemotherapy patient administered the RNAs. The chemo drug still forces a reduction in platelets, but in the presence of the RNA fragments, the platelets are quickly returned to normal, and this recovery is seen after each of the subsequent doses of chemotherapy. After each dose, the platelets are restored so the oncologist can maintain the treatment to optimize its effect on the patient's tumor.
Here is another example, and as you can see, the pattern is the same. In patients protected by RNA fragments, chemotherapy is completed as planned, without interruption or dose reduction, and there is no need for platelet transfusions. This indicates that the RNA fragments can serve as an essential adjunct of chemotherapy. They should be part of the regimen whenever drugs that damage the bone marrow are administered. Note that the RNA fragments restore platelet counts in the cancer patients just like the rabbits that were given a chemo drug. This is an excellent example of the use of an animal model system. The RNA fragments are certainly successful at stimulating cell division and differentiation in bone marrow stem cells, but where do these fragments come from? Beljansky prepared his fragments from E. coli K12, a bacteria that is safe for human consumption. The clinical study at CTCA tested whether this source was critical. The results shown in this slide revealed that when RNA fragments were prepared from yeast cells, the preparation failed to stimulate platelet production. The source of the RNA is critical to success. Uh, this slide shows an image of a publication resulting from the clinical trial at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. One more aspect of the trial is worth emphasizing. While the RNA fragments completely compensate for a very serious negative side effect of the chemo drugs, they have no negative side effects of their own. In the language of the clinicians, there were no adverse events associated with administration of the bacterial RNA fragments. The trial was um, for patients with advanced disease. All of these patients have been treated so often that their bone marrow has been damaged. And part of the damage was that they were not producing enough of the blood cells that control internal bleeding in the body. And when that happens, the, uh, the oncologist usually has to minimize the dose of the drug or even stop the drug. Um, the agent that developed these RNA primary primers um, prevent this uh, event from happening in your patients. So you're allowed to actually complete the therapy at the optimal dose, at the optimal time. And this uh, allows the doctor to give you the best chance of having a longer life. My work was actually to uh, confirm that, this, this, that these RNA primers work in cancer patients. My work identified the optimal doses and when to give the doses to the patients. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done to actually make the drug more effective, but even now the drug can be given in any oncology clinic and it would actually help the oncologist treat the patients at an optimal dose of chemotherapy to enhance the patient's chances of uh, long-term survival. The challenge here is, is, is one of the, the challenge here is getting the discovery out to the medical community. We have an additional tool that can make treatment more effective, much more effective. And it's, and it's very easy to apply to patients, and there's no reason not to. I mean, a doctor could read my paper and, and, and do it the next day and the next patient.